Richest spiritual blessings, grace and peace. Prophet Karen Pina here, God's coach. And I'm coming today to talk with you because mentors, coaches, trainers, spiritual parents, apostles are on my mind and on Yahweh's mind. He woke me up this morning and gave me some things to share with you as it relates to how to handle and cope with disciples when they leave. Sometimes they leave abruptly, so I'm believing that the things that he gave me here to share with you, these reasons, will bring you much wisdom, comfort, and joy. So let's dive right in. The first reason why they leave is for the same reason why they left Yeshua. We know that in John 6, 63 through 67, that he said that he wanted them to eat his flesh. He told them, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they were really offended by that, and he discerned it. And so he asked them, does this offend you? And then he went on further to say, so what, you're going to leave me like everyone else has left me? And so the reason why they leave is just because the teaching that he has given you, the instruction, the prophetic instruction, the apostolic revelation, whatever it is that you are giving them that Father says to give concerning who either they are or who Yeshua is, it's just too hard. And they flat out leave for that very reason. You know, sometimes what they'll do, they may not come right out and say it, but they believe, really, that you coming into their life, start making everything go in disarray. You know, everything was fine before you came along, but now you're here and everything is a mess. Everything is hard. Everything is turbulent. And uh, the truth is, if you're going to train and mentor people and show them how to move into their authority and teach them how to become like Christ, to reflect the image of Christ, the reality is that in and of itself is going to create some turbulence. So the teaching could just be too hard and it causes them to leave. The other thing is they just simply may not want to be accountable. Everybody says they do, you know. Send me a trainer. I wish I had a trainer. I wish I had a mentor. I wish I had a good covering. I wish I had a good leader. And then when Yahweh sends one, and the training and the mentoring, the developing, the shaping, the molding begins to take place, guess what? They mumble, groan, whine, and complain. They can't be corrected. They don't honor or respect God-given authority. They absolutely negate it. They don't even consider it. They just don't want to submit, bottom line. And sometimes they leave simply because they love these more than Yahweh. You know, when he asked Peter, do you love me more than these? He asked him that several times and he was actually getting annoyed. Well, you know, that's how we do too. Not with our lips, with our actions. We love stuff more than him, whatever that stuff may be. Everybody has their these. It could be your career. It could be your job. It could be ministry. It could be your children. It could be your money. It could be anything. It could be your body, your temple. Anything. So sometimes we love these more than him. And that causes people to leave abruptly. Because the reality is if they can't be his disciple and they can't follow him, surely they're not going to follow you. Now, I'm not sure how you go about determining who to coach, who to train, who to mentor, or who your spiritual children are. But one of the things that he has given my husband and I to do, and we do this in every area of our life, in ministry and in our own personal life, is anytime anyone comes into our life, we begin to pray and ask Father to show us the purpose that they are in our lives. And sometimes they'll answer us immediately and we'll just know. But most often it unfolds over time. And we'll know what the purpose is most of the time before they do. However, we won't go run to that person and say, 
Yahweh told me that you are my fill in the blank client, spiritual parent, excuse me, spiritual child, disciple. No, we don't do that. We do nothing differently than what we were doing before in our interactions with them. However, what we do do differently is pray. And we pray and we ask Yahweh to show them who we are in their life. And when he does, and they come and tell us whatever he said, then that's when we say, great. And we begin to establish some boundaries, mentoring agreements, covenant partnership relationships, contracts, things like that, coaching agreements, so that everybody is clear about whose role is what and where we are taking you and how long it's going to take you to get there. Those are very important things when it comes to submitting to anyone if they're going to be training you, mentoring you, developing you, covering you. So that's one of the things that I wanted to mention because it's a beautiful thing that he's given us. Because see, when it comes time and they just decide now they're going to leave, then the onus is really on them. And it's between them and Yahweh as it relates to why they left and where they're going. In other words, you are out of the picture and you don't have to be involved with their decision because you never told them from the beginning that you were there anything. He told them. So if he told them, then they are accountable to him. They answer to him for their actions, whether they stay or whether they go. And that to me is so freeing and it's so beautiful and I love it. Um, this way no one will ever be able to say to you that you initiated the parenting, the covering, the discipling, the mentoring. No, Yahweh did it and they came to you. Now what's your role here when they come up with whatever the fleshly, carnal, demonically inspired reason is that they're leaving. What then really is your role if you're not the one who's influencing the decision that they answer to him? Well, your role is to stay in the spirit and it's to keep your ears open so that you can hear him and what he would say to you about how you should respond. Notice, I didn't say how you should react. He's saying through me how you should respond. Very key distinction here. And here are some of the things that he might tell you when you keep your ear to his mouth. He might say, Karen, they went a fishing. <laughs> Go after them. They're having a presumptuous moment. You remember that in the scripture. And then you'll go and you'll show them how to stand, how to catch the fish, how to do whatever it is that he has placed them in your life to show them how to do and you'll bring them back so that might be one thing that he might say the other thing he might say is Karen let it go let it go I've been working in the situation for a very long time and just leave it be if they haven't heard me all this time here we go again surely they're not going to hear what you have to say or what you're doing so when he tells me that what that reveals to me is that this does not require a heartfelt response from me and you should not give it one either so in other words you don't have to invest any emotional energy spiritual energy or mental energy around this really your posture should be very nice and very loving bye bye and move on you know i heard a quote last night that blessed me tremendously and the quote was and i'm going to read it from my little notes here so i get it exact it says you must learn to separate vanity from sanity and that was by reverend al sharpton from the scroll and that blessed me tremendous tremendously because that quote says this to me sometimes we get caught up in vain things like how many people do we have how many fish have we caught 
you know, how many people are we mentoring, coaching, training? How many spiritual people uh, are we parenting? How many people are under our covering? And we do that all at the expense of our own sanity. You see, these rogue, rebellious, uncommitted, non-yielding, unteachable, uncoachable, idol-worshipping people that we call disciples drive us crazy. And yet, we hold on to them for dear life at the expense of our own sanity. I tell you, I declare today, I make a prophetic announcement. It is time to make a divine separation. It's time for a divine separation to take place. Be secure in what he's called you to do and who he's called you to be. You can't flip out every time somebody decides, for whatever reason, that they're going to leave. Just can't do it. Lastly, you might hear him say, Karen, accept it for what it is. You've given all that you can give. You've poured out and poured out and poured out, and there's no sign of fruitfulness. Hmm. You see, sometimes we are in people's life to lay a foundation, and we might not be there when the building is erected. In other words, we might not be there when the harvest or the fruit of what you sowed begins to come up. But what you must do is know that if you obey everything that he told you to do, then guess what? The rest is up to him. This is not the time to start second guessing, guessing yourself. This is not the time to start blaming yourself. This is not the time to launch a full scale CSI investigation. This is not the time to start psychoanalyzing yourself. <laughs> Did I say something? Did I do something? What if I had said it this way? They wouldn't have gotten offended. If I had said it that way, they wouldn't have gotten offended. Did I release that too quickly? No. Again, this is not the time to launch a full-scale CSI investigation. Acceptance without full understanding is a beautiful thing. I'll repeat that. Acceptance without full understanding is a beautiful thing. Have you experienced it? I'm learning to experience it every day, to just accept things for what they are and know that he's in control. You know, the scripture tells us to follow Christ and it tells us to lay our life down in order to do that. And you know what I have found to be true? Some people who say they're disciples, they lay their lives down for a moment and then when they feel like it, they pick it back up again. And so sometimes that's the reason why they leave because they are now regaining control of their life and you being in their life means that control is fully given to Yahweh and a lot of people don't want that. They just don't want it. I had someone tell me one time and I'll never forget this. It was a lady and she invited me to a fellowship and when I got to the fellowship, I shared some things that were on my heart. If you know me by now, you know I'm always in the Word, always praying, always studying. And so I had been that day, and it was like no other day. And, you know, I'm at a group, and people are talking. And so I began to share some of the things that he had impressed upon my heart in the study that day. And um, a couple people, you know, were a little taken aback. And I discerned that but I still felt led to share what he wanted me to share. Well, the next day she called me and she thanked me for coming and told me what a blessing that I was. And then she says, but I wanna share something with you. And I said, what? And she asked me if I remembered a specific lady there and she described her and told me her name and I really did not remember her very vaguely. And I kind of said to her, no, not really. She said, well, anyway, the reason why I wanted to kind of put her back in your remembrance is because she said something yesterday about you and I wanted to share it with you. And I said, really, what? And she says, she said um, that that woman is more God than what most people want. I have never forgotten that. Now, I know the lady probably did not mean that as a compliment, <laughs> but I took it as one because 
it helps me to know that when people are running away from me, it's probably because I am more God than what they want. And I'm not saying that from a place of arrogance, haughtiness, or cockiness. I'm just saying that many of us are not as hungry and thirsty as we should be. And it shows when someone who is really hungry and thirsty and completely sold out, put their life down a long time ago, not picking it back up, comes into our life and says, hey, this is the way, walk in it. That trainer, that mentor, that apostolic covering, that spiritual parent. Okay, so I just wanted to say that to you because it's really, really important to know that that's a reason that people might leave. That's a reason they just pick up their life. They don't want to be submitted to anyone anymore. And the reality is, guess what? They never really were. They never really were. When someone pick up their life again and regain control, it should tell you that they weren't submitted to begin with. They didn't take the God-given authority that he has bestowed upon you seriously. They really didn't. They never submitted to it. And they definitely never feared it. No matter how much, here's another reason, people pretend and give you lip service, the fruit doesn't lie. The fruit doesn't lie. What do I mean by that? Well, just because they're in your classes, they're in your coaching sessions, they're sitting out in the pews every time you minister, whether it be locally or somewhere else, they're following behind you, serving you, whatever the case may be. They've purchased, sewed into your ministry for all the books and DVDs and resources, whatever you have to offer. But guess what? All that does not mean any transformation is taking place. You can have all your mentor's books. You can have every DVD that your apostle has ever preached. You can sit in every training session that your coach or your mentor has ever offered, but it does not mean that Christ's image is being manifested, developed in you. It doesn't mean that you're coming into the full stature of Yeshua HaMashiach. It doesn't mean that change is taking place. And you know, our Father does not want you deceived. He really doesn't. He doesn't want you to be deceived in the appearance of people partaking. You know, it can be deceptive. It looks like they're partaking. It looks like you're fellowshipping. Um, but the reality is nothing, no transformation has taken place. No, no character. You know, one thing about me that I've learned, um, and it took me a long time to learn this, and I'm going to share it with you. As you can see, I'm highly verbal. And uh, sometimes in my younger years in Christ, I would share my convictions, things that he had told me, revelations that he had given me, and people would listen. And for me, because they listened, even if they didn't agree, because they didn't disagree, I thought that we were in agreement. <laughs> Check that out. And you know what I have found? Just because someone doesn't disagree with you does not mean they agree with the revelation or the truth or your convictions either. So I just wanted to leave you with that because perhaps maybe that happens to you. You might mentor someone, coach them, train them, parent them, and tell them something that Yahweh tells you to tell them right from the word. But just because you believe that and they don't, disagree or they're not honorary or they don't verbally lash out does not mean that they are in agreement and so sometimes that's going on and then when they leave we're surprised because we thought that they were receiving believing <laughs> accepting and the truth is the word was not penetrating it was not entering because they didn't believe it and nothing was taking place the last reason why they might leave is because the fearful and unbelieving cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. The word tells us that. And you have to know that if you, again, have been assigned any kind of work 
that's going to teach people how to come into their kingdom authority, how to move in his power, how to manifest his glory, how to be like Christ, that that's going to require someone who's not fearful. And it's going to require some belief. And so an uh, unbelieving and fearful disciple cannot enter into those kinds of kingdom teachings, those kingdom principles. They're not postured to do so. And so that's perhaps why they leave as well. So I pray this has really helped you. And in summary, there are two biblical responses, two biblical responses for what you should do when disciples leave. Press on or pursue. And both must be done in love. This is Prophet Karen Pina here, God's Coach, signing out.